The Intel 80386, also known as I386 or just 386, is a 32-bit microprocessor introduced in 1985. The first versions had 275,000 transistors and were the CPU of many workstations and high-end personal computers of the time. As the original implementation of the 32-bit extension of the 80286 architecture, the 80386 instruction set, programming model, and binary encodings are still the common denominator for all 32-bit x86 processors, which is termed the I386 architecture, x86, or IA32, depending on context. The 32-bit 80386 can correctly execute most code intended for the earlier 16-bit processors such as 8086 and 80286 that were ubiquitous in early PCs. Following the same tradition, modern 64-bit x86 processors are able to run most programs written for older x86 CPUs, all the way back to the original 16-bit 8086 of 19 1978. Over the years, successively newer implementations of the same architecture have become several hundreds of times faster than the original 80386 and thousands of times faster than the 8086. A 33 MHz 80386 was reportedly measured to operate at about 11.4 MIPS. The 80386 was introduced in October 1985, while manufacturing of the chips in significant quantities commenced in June 1986. Mainboards for 80386 based computer systems were cumbersome and expensive at first, but manufacturing was rationalized upon the 80386 a mainstream adoption. The first personal computer to make use of the 80386 was designed and manufactured by Compaq and marked the first time a fundamental component in the IBM PC compatible de facto standard was updated by a company other than IBM. In May 2006, Intel announced that 80386 production would stop at the end of September 2007. Although it had long been obsolete as a personal computer CPU, Intel and others had continued making the chip for embedded systems. Such systems using an 80386 or one of many derivatives are common in aerospace technology and electronic musical instruments, among others. Some mobile phones also used later fully static CMOS variants of the 80386 processor, such as BlackBerry 950 and Nokia 9000 communicator. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Architecture The processor was a significant evolution in the x86 architecture, and extended a long line of processors that stretched back to the Intel 8008. The predecessor of the 80386 was the Intel 80286, a 16-bit processor with a segment-based memory management and protection system. The 80386 added a 32-bit architecture and a paging translation unit, which made it much easier to implement operating systems that used virtual memory. It also offered support for register debugging. The 80386 featured three operating modes, real mode, protected mode and virtual mode. The protected mode, which debuted in the 286, was extended to allow the 386 to address up to 4 GB of memory. The all-new Virtual 8086 mode or VM86 made it possible to run one or more real-mode programs in a protected environment, although some programs were not compatible. The ability for a 386 to be set up to act like it had a flat memory model in protected mode despite the fact that it uses a segmented memory model in all modes would arguably be the most important feature change for the x86 processor family until AMD released x86-64 in 2003. 
Several new instructions have been added to 386, BSF, BSR, BT, BTS, BTR, BTC, CDQ, CWDE, LFS, LGS, LSS, MOVSX, MOVZX, SETCC, SHLD, SHRD. Two new segment registers have been added FS and GS for general purpose programs. Single machine status word of 286 grew into eight control registers CR0 County Route 7. Debug registers DRODR7 were added for hardware breakpoints. New forms of MOV instruction are used to access them. Chief architect in the development of the 80386 was John H. Crawford. He was responsible for extending the 80286 architecture and instruction set to 32-bit, and then led the microprogram development for the 80386 chip. The 80486 and P5 Pentium line of processors were descendants of the 80386 design. Topic: Data types of 80386. The following data types are directly supported and thus implemented by one or more 80386 machine instructions. These data types are briefly described here. Bit boolean value, bit field, group of up to 32 bits, and bit string, up to 4 gigabits in length. 8-bit integer byte, either signed range minus 128.127 or unsigned range 0, 0.255. 16-bit integer, either signed range minus 32768, 32767 or unsigned range 0, 65535. 32-bit integer, either signed range minus 231.231-1 or unsigned range 0, 0.232-1 64-bit integer, either signed range minus 263.263-1 or unsigned range 0, 0.264-1 Offset, a 16 or 32 bit displacement referring to a memory location using any addressing mode. Pointer, a 16 bit selector together with a 16 or 32 bit offset. Character, 8 bit character code. String, a sequence of 8, 16 or 32 bit words up to 4 gigabits in length. BCD decimal digits 0 0.9 represented by unpacked bytes packed BCD two BCD digits in one byte range 0 0.99 topic <laughs> <laughs> example code The following 80386 assembly source code is for a subroutine named underscore stratolauer that copies a null terminated ASCIIZ character string from one location to another, converting all alphabetic characters to lower case. The string is copied one byte 8 -bit character at a time. The example code uses the EBP base pointer register to establish a call frame, an area on the stack that contains all of the parameters and local variables for the execution of the subroutine. This kind of calling convention supports reentrant and recursive code and has been used by ALGOL-like languages since the late 1950s. A flat memory model is assumed, specifically, that the DS and S segments address the same region of memory. Topic. Chip variants Topic. The 80386SX variant 
In 1988, Intel introduced the 80386SX, most often referred to as the 386SX, a cut-down version of the 80386 with a 16-bit data bus mainly intended for lower-cost PCs aimed at the home, educational, and small business markets, while the 386DX would remain the high-end variant used in workstations, servers, and other demanding tasks. The CPU remained fully 32-bit internally, but the 16-bit bus was intended to simplify circuit board layout and reduce total cost. The 16-bit bus simplified designs but hampered performance. Only 24 pins were connected to the address bus, therefore limiting addressing to 16 megabytes, but this was not a critical constraint at the time. Performance differences were due not only to differing data bus widths, but also due to performance-enhancing cache memories often employed on boards using the original chip. The original 80386 was subsequently renamed 80386DX to avoid confusion. However, Intel subsequently used the DX. Suffix to refer to the floating point capability of the 80486DX. The 80387SX was an 80387 part that was compatible with the 386SX, i.e., with a 16 bit data bus. The 386SX was packaged in a surface mount QFP and sometimes offered in a socket to allow for an upgrade. Topic: The i386SL variant. The i386SL was introduced as a power-efficient version for laptop computers. The processor offered several power management options, e.g., SMM, as well as different sleep modes to conserve battery power. It also contained support for an external cache of 16 to 64 kilobytes. The extra functions and circuit implementation techniques caused this variant to have over three times as many transistors as the i386DX. The i386SL was first available at 20 MHz clock speed, with the 25 MHz model later added. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Business importance. The first company to design and manufacture a PC based on the Intel 80386 was Compaq. By extending the 1624-bit IBM PC, at standard into a natively 32-bit computing environment, Compaq became the first third party to implement a major technical hardware advance on the PC platform. IBM was offered use of the 80386, but had manufacturing rights for the earlier 80286. IBM therefore chose to rely on that processor for a couple more years. The early success of the Compaq 386 PC played an important role in legitimizing the PC clone industry and in de-emphasizing IBM's role within it. Prior to the 386, the difficulty of manufacturing microchips and the uncertainty of reliable supply made it desirable that any mass-market semiconductor be multi-sourced, that is, made by two or more manufacturers, the second and subsequent companies manufacturing under license from the originating company. The 386 was for a time 4.7 years only available from Intel, since Andy Grove, Intel's CEO at the time, made the decision not to encourage other manufacturers to produce the processor as second sources. This decision was ultimately crucial to Intel's success in the market. The 386 was the first significant microprocessor to be single-sourced. Single sourcing the 386 allowed Intel greater control over its development and substantially greater profits in later years. AMD introduced its compatible M386 processor in March 1991 after overcoming legal obstacles, thus ending Intel's 4.7-year monopoly on 386-compatible processors. 
From 1991 IBM also manufactured 386 chips under license for use only in IBM PCs and boards. Topic: <laughs> Compatibles The AMD M386SX and M386DX were almost exact clones of the 80386SX and 80386DX. Legal disputes caused production delays for several years, but AMD's 40 MHz part eventually became very popular with computer enthusiasts as a low-cost and low-power alternative to the 25 MHz 486SX. The power draw was further reduced in the Notebook models, M386 DXL, SXL, DXLV, SXLV, which could operate with 3.3 volts and were implemented in fully static CMOS circuitry. Chips and Technologies Super 386 3860SX and 38600DX were developed using reverse engineering. They sold poorly, due to some technical errors and incompatibilities, as well as their late appearance on the market. They were therefore short-lived products. Cyrix CX486 SLC, CX486 DLC could be simplistically described as a kind of 386-486 hybrid chip that included a small amount of on-chip cash. It was popular among computer enthusiasts but did poorly with OEMs. The Cyrix CX486 SLC and Cyrix CX486 DLC processors were PIN compatible with 80386SX and 80386DX respectively. These processors were also manufactured and sold by Texas Instruments. IBM 386 SLC and 486 SLC, DLC were variants of Intel's design which contained a large amount of on-chip cache 8 kilobytes, and later 16 kilobytes. The agreement with Intel limited their use to IBM's own line of computers and upgrade boards only, so they were not available on the open market. Early problems Intel originally intended for the 80386 to debut at 16 MHz. However, due to poor yields, it was instead introduced at 12 MHz. Early in production, Intel discovered a marginal circuit that could cause a system to return incorrect results from 32-bit multiply operations. Not all of the processors already manufactured were affected, so Intel tested its inventory. Processors that were found to be bug-free were marked with a double sigma, SS and affected processors were marked 16-bit S, W only. These latter processors were sold as good parts, since at the time 32-bit capability was not relevant for most users. Such chips are now extremely rare and became collectible. The i387 math coprocessor was not ready in time for the introduction of the 80386, and so many of the early 80386 motherboards instead provided a socket and hardware logic to make use of an 80287. In this configuration the FPU would operate asynchronously to the CPU, usually with a clock rate of 10 MHz. The original Compact Desk Pro 386 is an example of such design. However, this was an annoyance to those who depended on floating point performance, as the performance advantages of the 80387 over the 80287 were significant. <laughs> Pin compatible upgrades Intel later offered a modified version of its 80486DX in 80386 packaging, branded as the Intel RapidCAD. This provided an upgrade path for users with 80386 compatible hardware. The upgrade was a pair of chips that replaced both the 80386 and 80387. 
Since the 80486DX design contained an FPU, the chip that replaced the 80386 contained the floating point functionality, and the chip that replaced the 80387 served very little purpose. However, the latter chip was necessary in order to provide the FERR signal to the mainboard and appear to function as a normal floating point unit. Third parties offered a wide range of upgrades, for both SX and DX systems. The most popular ones were based on the Cyrix 486 DLC, SLC core, which typically offered a substantial speed improvement due to its more efficient instruction pipeline and internal L1 SRAM cache. The cache was usually 1 KB, or sometimes 8 KB in the TI variant. Some of these upgrade chips such as the 486 DRX2, SRX2 were marketed by Cyrix themselves, but they were more commonly found in kits offered by upgrade specialists such as Kingston, Evergreen and Improve It Technologies. Some of the fastest CPU upgrade modules featured the IBM SLC, DLC family notable for its 16 KB L1 cache, or even the Intel 486 itself. Many 386 upgrade kits were advertised as being simple drop-in replacements, but often required complicated software to control the cache or clock doubling. Part of the problem was that on most 386 motherboards, the A20 line was controlled entirely by the motherboard with the CPU being unaware, which caused problems on CPUs with internal caches. Overall, it was very difficult to configure upgrades to produce the results advertised on the packaging, and upgrades were often not very stable or not fully compatible. <laughs> <laughs> Models and variants <laughs> <laughs> Early 5 volts models Topic 80386DX Original version, released in October 1985. Capable of working with 16 or 32-bit external buses. Cache, depends on mainboard. Package, PGA-132 or PQFP-132. Process, first types CHMOS3, 1.5 micrometers, later CHMOS IV, 1 micrometer Die size, 104 square millimeters CA, 10 millimeters times 10 millimeters in CHMOS3 and 39 square millimeters 6 millimeters times 6.5 millimeters in CHMOS IV Transistor count, 275,000 Specified max clock, 12 MHz early models, later 16, 20, 25 and 33 MHz. <laughs> RapidCAD A specially packaged Intel 486DX and a dummy floating point unit FPU designed as pin compatible replacements for an Intel 80386 processor and 80387 FPU. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Versions for embedded systems. Topic eighty thousand three hundred seventy six. This was an embedded version of the eight oh three eight six SX, which did not support real mode and paging in the MMU. Topic I three hundred eighty six X, I three hundred eighty six EXTB, and I three hundred eighty six EXTC. System and power management and built-in peripheral and support functions, 282C59A interrupt controllers, timer, counter 3 channels, asynchronous CO 2 channels, synchronous CO 1 channel, watchdog timer hardware, software, PIO. 
usable with 80387SX or I387SLFPUs. Data address bus 1626 of a bit. Package PQFP132, SQFP144 and PGA168. Process CHMOSV 0.8 micrometers. Specified max clock I386X, 16 MHz at 2.7 to 3.3 V or 20 MHz at 3.0 to 3.6 V or 25 MHz at 4.5 to 5.5 V I386EXTB, 20 MHz at 2.7 to 3.6 V or 25 MHz at 3.0 to 3.6 V I386 EXTC, 25 MHz at 4.5 to 5.5 V or 33 MHz at 4.5 to 5.5 V. Topic I386 CXSA and I386 SXSA or I386 SXTA. Transparent power management mode, integrated MMU and TTL compatible inputs only 386SXSA. Usable with I387SX or I387SLFPUs. Data, address bus, 1626 of a bit 24 bits for I386SXSA. Package, BQFP100. Voltage 4.5 to 5.5 volt 25 and 33 MHz 4.75 to 5.25 volt 40 MHz Process CHMOSV 0 8 micrometers Specified max clock 25 33 40 MHz Topic 386 I386 CXSB Transparent power management mode and integrated MMU. Usable with I387SX or I387SLFPUs. Data, address bus, 1626 of a bit. Package, BQFP100. Voltage 3.0 volt 16 megahertz or 3.3 volt 25 megahertz process CHMOSV 0 8 micrometers specified max clock 16 25 megahertz topic see also List of Intel microprocessors Topic Notes and References Topic External Links Intel 80386 Programmers Reference Manual 1986 Intel 80386 processor family Intel 2317460001 introduction to the 80386 April 86 April 1986 and including the 80386 data sheet Intel 2316300002 80386 high performance 32 bit microprocessor with integrated memory management Data sheet for 80386-12 and 80386-16 1988 Intel Microprocessors and Peripheral Handbook Volume 1 Microprocessor including 80386 High Performance 32BIT CHMOS Microprocessor with Integrated Memory Management October 1987 Order Number 2316300004 
1989 Intel Microprocessor and Peripheral Handbook Vol. 1 Microprocessor including 386 trademark microprocessor high performance 32BITCHMOS microprocessor with integrated memory management November 1988 Order number, 231630-005 Detailed list of early 80386 steppings revisions.